Hello there, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And I want to show you how to make this cute little um, Santa box and the matching um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This is um, using the designer treat box dies. And for the little Santa, I've used a couple of the um, items from the gnome dies. These can all be found in the current mini Stampin' Up! catalog. Uh, on page 61 has got the dies that I'll be using and there is a stamp set that goes with it however I'm not using the stamp set um, but I'm going to recreate this little reindeer here and at the end of the video I'll be showing you some other samples of other things I've made with um, this set I've got the bat and then I've got some other um, projects that are completely different I'll be giving you some hints and tips on how to attach the bits to the top of the box so it can still be open and used and at the bottom of the video in the description I will be listing all the products I use so if you want to purchase them you can find the product codes listed below talk to your Stampin' Up! demonstrator if you're in New Zealand and don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator I'd love to be yours you can go to my website michellecritchley.stampinup.net um, to contact me to see what's um, currently available. Uh, you can purchase directly online or contact me if you want to purchase. Um, talk to me first or if you'd like to come to any classes if you live nearby. I also um, post out uh, card classes so if you want to do that. I've got a blog as well, uh, papercraftaddiction.blogspot.co.nz and I just recently put a lot of posts on there about using the design a treat box dies. However, you won't find this there because I only just created this um, last night and I was so excited with how it turned out. Um, I decided to do a video to show everybody. So um, let me just show how the box is open. So the boxes all look like that when you glue them together and then they pull off the top and open it up and it's rather small. You could fit a couple um, Hershey Kisses in there. I think you can um, fit maybe one Ferrero Rocher um, sideways because it's actually a rectangular box, not a square box. Um, a few other little treats, or if you want, you could just put um, love notes in there. So if you were doing this for Christmas, you could just have little messages in there, maybe a message from Santa. So um, I've done the reindeer, and this has the gnome on the top and looks like Santa Claus and you pull it out, out so he's got a bit of a neck there and then that way you can open it up and get into the box okay so I'll tell you everything I've used and we'll get into uh, recreating these projects so um, of course, all the papers I've used are stamping up um, paper and color cardstock. Um, you can use any that you have at home, but if you want good quality and want to match these colors, um, this is stamping up. So I'll move these aside for now. First, you need the Design a Treat Box dies in this set of dies, and you will need a die cutting machine. So in this set of dies, there's the one large die large-ish die, that cuts the whole box in one go. So um, I'll be showing you how to put that together. Then there's lots of other dies. Um, several are the same uh, shape. That's to do the little, um, if you choose to do the little numbers on the front, so you can get that shape and, and cut out the numbers. And I'll show you something later on that I use the numbers. There's the die to cut a bow for the top. You get two of those dies there. Um, there's the bat die here. Uh, we've got antlers and ears, and then um, that can be for the deer or it could be for another animal, maybe a bear if you want. Um, and there's some um, bunny ears, which I haven't used yet. And then there's a strip here of numbers, zero through nine. So that's great for doing, um, I used it to do an advent tree. Again, I'll show you that later. Um, you can also see that on my blog. Um, also good for doing numbers. So like here you got the bat with 31 for Halloween. So you can um, have lots of versatility with that. The other 
set that we're going to use to make the Santa is the gnome dies. So the gnome dies um, come in a pack like this. There's five dies that cut out images from the gnome stamp set. So four gnomes and one mushroom. And then there's these other images that cut other things out. So you've got um, the beard, you can do a hat, um, some circles for the nose, you got the tops of mushrooms, stems of mushrooms, um, little um, legs for the gnome and a bit of grass. So I'll be using some of those with it um, with this set and I'll give you a tip because see that little circle there? I'll show you in a minute what that little circle is for. Uh, and I also have some other um, videos as well as um, I'll be having more information on my blog about using the gnome um, set. I've got lots of different um, cards that I've been playing around with. So first you need to cut out the base so you would need to cut this piece and the best way to um, conserve your paper here in New Zealand we use A4 we're in the metric system so the best um, way to do that is take your A4 piece of cardstock and cut um, the short side at 12 centimeters so on the grid paper here I can measure it up and see that it's 12 centimeters so I did that so I cut it to 12 centimeters so I cut off some of my A4 piece and then run it through the die cutting machine and that way when you place it in there you don't waste as much cardstock so I could actually get a second one from this same piece here and I went ahead and cut a couple of the ears out of this. This one I'm doing with crumb cake. My original reindeer, that was soft suede and um, early espresso for the antlers. This one I'm doing, the body of the reindeer is going to be crumb cake and the antlers are going to be soft suede. So I did that for the reindeer as well as, there's the cutout piece, as well as for the Santa Claus. Um, the Santa, this color here is Poppy Parade. My original Santa is in real red. Now you might not be able to see very well in the video the difference in reds, but there is a difference because of the lighting here. So whichever, whatever red you like, um, we have lots of other shades of red, but I thought I'd try it with the Poppy Parade because I think that gives a nice brilliant um, color. The other things I cut out so that was with the big die here. Then I've already gone and used one of these on my gold foil to cut out a piece that will be the belt for my Santa. I have a strip of cardstock. This was just a leftover piece of basic black. Um, it's about 15 centimeters long by one centimeter wide. You just need something big enough to go around the base of the card the card sorry the box I'm so used to making cards so um, as I said I did two sets of antlers so there's one and there's the other one now my little um, reindeer here you can see through the ears and I wanted to recreate it um, with the cute pink ears like what they have in the catalog so that's why I did two sets I left the little circles the little inserts inside the one and pop those out. Then I just simply took this over some light colored cardstock. This is petal pink and I traced around the cardstock and then I just cut the top out. So I'm going to glue that to the inside. I've got two bits to give me the pink. And there's my antlers in soft suede. And then for the Santa I also needed um, a beard section. Now, the nice thing with this die, die piece, it embosses as well, so it gives you that beard shape. Um, and I don't know if you can quite tell, I did it on the white velvet um, paper, so it's actually fuzzy. So you might be able to tell, see that's just flat and plain, but that has got a bit of fuzz to it. Really, really nice. Um, and then a nose which I haven't cut out yet so I'm going to do a nose um, with the gnome one of these little circles for the nose 
And so with these dies, I use the antlers and the ears there as well. So I now need to do the hat. Okay, so I need a nose and I need the hat. With the hat, for the gnome, here's your hat there, and it gives you some nice stitching on the edge, and it has this big circle, a uh, big cutout area. Now, most of the dies will have um, a hole in them. So this is the beard. So if you didn't know, they have a hole in them that when you die cut them, if the paper gets stuck, you can just um, poke through there with um, a pin or the tip of your pointy scissors to eject the cardstock. So um, that's what those holes are for. Now this one doesn't have that. It has that big space there which you could push through. Um, and you might be wondering, well, why do you have such a big space when you only need a little hole? That is because we've got this little die here. And notice the shape fits perfectly inside there. Now, when I first saw it, I knew I could tell it fit in there, and I thought, what's that for, I wonder? I've used it to put a hole in the top so I can tie things through there. You can also use it to hang things um, from. So if you've got your gnomes, um, you can use it to hang, um, make tags with the gnomes and hang it. I'll just show you quickly. Here's a little sample there. So there's the full gnome with his um, uh, pants on and everything. And so the hole there allows me to tie it to this box and turn it into a tag. So I'm going to cut that out. So I want one with the hole in it. And then the other one, I don't want it because as you can see, I've glued it on the back. And I don't want it cut the full way because I want to have more um, cardstock to hold it in place in the back. So I'll show you a tip for that. Let me bring my mini um, cut and emboss machine into view. Now for the gnomes, you can do the use the mini one, but if you're doing the boxes, unfortunately um, the mini, the box die, is too big to go through the mini machine, so you would want your full-size machine. So if you have a full-size stamp and cut machine, that's fine. You'll be able to do these boxes. So I've got my plate, I've got my base plate, number one. I've got a number two cutting plate. I'm gonna put my card stock down. So this is the um, Poppy Parade. Um, it's just a scrap piece of card stock I had. So I'm putting my hat face down and that little circle, I'm just going to pop it in there. It doesn't matter if it moves around a bit, as long as it stays in that section. And then I'm just going to make room because I forgot to cut a nose out earlier. So if you didn't already know, you can put multiple things on to your um, stamp, stamp cut and emboss machine, um, as long as they stay within the um, plastic cutting tray. And then you don't need to line them up completely. See, this is hanging over the edge, but anything hanging over here will not cut because there's not enough pressure. So make sure it's covering up the dies that you want to cut. And then just give it a push, and you can't see off screen. I'm turning the handle with my left hand. Nice thing with this is you can go left or right handed. So just go through once, nice and smooth. And now I've got my nose. Oop. And I went for a run. So there's my nose. And there is my hat with a hole in it. Now I want another hat, like I said, for the back. Now that's one of the cases where it gets stuck inside. And see, there's that release button. So if you take your paper snips, which are really sharp and pointed, hold the edge and I can just simply poke that and that little piece has now come out. Okay. Um, and if you're looking for a little dot, I mean that could be Rudolph's nose if I wanted it to be. See? Okay. So now I need one more hat for the back. 
I'm going to get a scrap of red because I don't have enough room left on this one. Actually, I might have enough room now that I've... No, I'll get another scrap. Um, okay, so I don't want this part to cut. This is going to be the back of the hat, and I don't want a hole in it, so I'm not going to put that piece there. But this, um, I don't need that part because I want it to go further down on the back of my Santa head. So I'm going to put, I'll just rip this scrap. There we go. So I'm going to put the die in there, and I want it to go for, I want to use this cardstock below there. So when I put it on, this time, I'm going to slide my top plate further in, and if you have a look at the top plate, it's beveled, so it comes to kind of a, not the same thickness at the very end. So where it's the same thickness, that will give you pressure to cut anything that's between the two plates, but anything beyond that, if there's no pressure on the top, it won't cut. So if you want a partial cut, some people do this with circles and things. You just line up. Let's see if I can show you on the camera. So my beveled part is above where the bottom of the um, hat cuts. So it's only going to cut the part that has the two pressure pieces on it. So the rest of it, this bottom part, will not cut out because there's nothing above to give it pressure to cut it out. So that's how you can use your dies to get partial cuts. I'm just going to move it up slightly. And let it slide through it. And take the top plate off, slide it back. And now you will see that it didn't cut all the way through. So I did a little too far there. I did the same on the back there. But now I can just cut this down and use this um, as a bigger piece on the back of my Santa hat. So I'll set that aside. So those are all our die cut pieces ready to go. And let's start making our box. I'll move this out of the way. Nice thing if you haven't used any of the stamp cut and emboss machines is the sides fold up and see, that's the mini, and the big one does the same thing. So it folds up nice and small, and then you've just got your plates to store next to it. You could even slide it in the top. So it takes up less space. The mini's quite good if you're going on holiday and just want to be able to cut a few things. But keep in mind, certain dies will not fit, like this one here. Okay, so let's start gluing things together. You're going to want your bone folder. And let's start with our reindeer. And you want to bend and burnish all the score lines so it'll fit together real nice. And I use glue because um, it gives me wiggle room. But um, if you want to use tape, you can put tape where I'm going to be putting glue. But I like to use glue in case it doesn't come together. Um, as well as I want the first time I stick it down because the um, Tombow liquid glue is much much more forgiving and um, you could emboss after you die cut your box you could emboss and get a texture on it you can die cut um, designer series paper which I've done now with this one Fold everything down, but you want the center, the little curved center one, to come back on itself. Okay. Um, just be aware. Sometimes designer series paper uh, is a bit thin, and so sometimes it can rip easily. So in that case, you probably just want to use your fingers to fold everything over. Okay. So now we have that all done. We just need to put glue or tape onto the two edges and stick it together. So you've got four edges that you're going to stick together. And so just 
hopefully you can see a bit of glue there. Now I like to do the two edges at once because trying to slip them together afterwards can be difficult. So just slip that over the top. What I find easiest is doing it down on the table, put it in place and hold it for a second before you burnish it with your bone folder. Now if you, you burnish it a little bit and then while it's still wet, you can take it up and just see how the edges aren't quite there. That way I can just gently slide it into place and get those corners to line up. With tape, if you stick it down and it's not lined up, you could rip your box to pull it apart. So now this side, I've got those two pieces to put glue on. So the Santa will come together exactly the same, so I will do that one off camera um, before decorating it so you, you don't have to watch this again. So just pushing the two bits together. I'll do a quick burnish down here and then just check that the corners are coming together. So if they don't come together, um, it can affect the closing of the box. And because I'm using Tombow, it dries very quickly. Um, so it's a very good glue. The only um, issue I have is it can get quite tacky, the parts that aren't stuck onto paper. So you don't want to use a lot. A little bit goes a long way. You don't want to use a lot. Okay. And, oh, I forgot to do the face. So if you have stamps, you would want to stamp the face first. I forgot to do that, but I'll do it now. Because um, I'm just going to use the um, Stampin' Write black pen to draw a face on it. Now, I drew the face on my original one, kind of mimicking the one in the catalog, and then I decided to turn it into Rudolph. So you could put any gem on there that you want, but I thought the heart pearls were quite nice, and you can color them using your Stampin' Blend markers. So I already colored a few of them using the Dark Poppy Parade. And there's three different types of hearts in there. There's like a matte one, a bit of a shimmer one, and then like a pearlescent one. So this is the pearlescent nose. And then I also colored the other one. So I'm gonna use the next one for the nose on this guy. So what I'll do is I will gently draw a face. I'm not very good with faces, but I didn't want to um, buy the stamp set just for a face. So I'm just going to put a dot where I think the nose should be. And I know reindeer's mouths don't go like this, but hey, that's what the stamp set makes it look like. And then we'll just put a couple eyes. There we go. So there we go. So, silly little face. And then I'm just going to pick up one of these that I colored earlier. It doesn't take long for them to dry, but as you can see I scribble all around the edges um, and it leaves a bit of residue. That way um, I get the color right where I want it. So instead of drawing a nose on this one, I'm just going to use the heart. There we go, there's the heart. So there's my reindeer nose, but you could use the red rhinestones. I did try that earlier, but it was really small, and I wanted the big nose and being heart-shaped I thought was quite cute. So now let's do the rest of it. So I want to have the pink inside the ears. So with this ear here that the center came out. I'm just going to put some glue around the edges on both sides and then as I said I already traced around um, petal pink so I traced that edge there and then cut the piece out. I'm trying to figure out which one goes where. Oh, there we go. And then I just left a little, I mean it was a scrap piece, I just left a little bit so it would have somewhere to hold on to. And this one as well. And 
and that way you can have a bit of color on the inside. So that gives me some color inside my antlers. And then, and sorry, that's not antlers, my ears. And then I want to glue the antlers um, in the center. So see how that piece is like, it comes just um, a long straight piece. If you say didn't want ears, you can simply close your box. So you put the two pieces together, put them through the center and through the other center. And you might think, oh, I glue it on the front. But if I glued it on the front, then I wouldn't be able to pull this back up because the antler would be in the way. But you can simply take the antler and slip it between the two pieces there. So you could just pop the antler between the two pieces and that holds the box shut. Antlers are staying in place. When I open the box, you simply pull it out. But if you want ears, do what I'm doing and do your some glue on here. I'm going to put it up on the pink because I'm going to put the ears on the back afterwards. Pop my antler there. And then I'm going to put some glue there. And leaving the cutout pieces in the center of my other one. So I left the cutout piece in the center. Didn't take it out. So that way I can have brown on the back of my ears. Alright. Just again, glue is the best thing here because you can wiggle it into place. So that bottom part of the antler is also the perfect size to stick with your ears. So, believe it or not, that one's actually done because now we have our antlers. And because the antlers are the same color as the box, I just slip them, if the ears are the same color as the box, I just slip them between the two pieces. It's always difficult to do when you're on camera. There we go. So I slip them between the two. It's all the same color. Blends together and keeps the box shut. You see they don't fall off. And that's what that one is. Now another trick you could do is um, I did this with the designer series paper. So it's much thinner same concept made the box and then I cut out two of the bows so cut two of the bows and I've glued them together just along the top edge so there's two of them there so the bottom is actually open see how that's open and so now I could slip that over the center and that holds it shut and allows you to pull it open and use it so that's another option you could do that with your um, ears but there's not a lot above to um, glue together so those are a couple options on how to um, stick your box together so now we'll set that aside and let's get Santa done so I will put the box together off screen like I said and we'll put the rest of it together on screen okay so there's the box put together now with the Santa we need to do the belt. So the, the front of it is going to be one of the sides that has the um, little curve flap at the top, tab at the top. So we want to do our belt. And I've cut this about 15 centimeters, which is um, probably longer than it needs to be. So I'm going to start the top. Now the top is going to be the front is going to be covered partially with um, our little gold so it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge but just going to finger pinch it so just using my finger around the edge I'm just going to like walk it around the box pinching on edge edge as I go and as you can see it is too long the reason for that is I'm going to put a little bit in the center. 
and um, instead of cutting it beforehand I want it to show you so that's going to be in the center to make it look like the belt's going all the way through the gold um, you could you know go through the trouble of cutting slits and sliding it through if you wanted to but uh, I'm not <laughs> so just figure out how much you want it to go through to be on the front and then just snip that piece off now that is it's about a centimeter so that would be about a centimeter square um, that I cut off and that will be stuck down here I'll just stick it down well I'm thinking of it could have been a, this one looks like that guy looks like it's a bit longer so it's up to you about a centimeter maybe 1.5 depends on how much you want the edges to show now if you're trying to stick something down and you don't have time to hold it blocks are good pop a block over it so now I've kind of finger pinched it so I've just gently pinched it where the edges are going to be and now I'm going to come through and just pinch it a bit more and I'm going to start at the back remember your tab part is the front so it's going to be wider in the front and narrow on the sides and just put a bit of glue along the sides the back and the sides and then just your box. Try to do this on camera. So put the wide part of the box down there and then just ease it into place. Again that's why liquid glue is good because you can adjust it down so it looks central. So just slip it down to where you want it to be. Try to make the edges come together. You just can rub it with your finger if you want. You could just get in there with a bone folder and give it a good burnishing. And then I only did the sides because that way I don't get glue everywhere. Now I can do the front. So now just a bit of glue there and there. Again, you're not going to see this. It's going to be covered up whoop, by the gold belt. No, it doesn't matter um, and that's why I did the join in the front because it gets covered up and you don't notice plus when you put belts on you usually attach them in the front so why not okay then I just popped my belt on with um, a dimensional you could glue it straight down if you want um, for that one I did put a dimensional on but I think I might glue it down because then the beard will probably look better so I'll just put a bit of glue on there and I'll glue that so glue on the back and just glue that covering up my join and making it look like the belt has gone all the way through the the um, Now for the fun part, the head. So, with the um, cutout beard, notice how there's like a little curve there? So that's like a placement line to show you where to place your little um, gnome hat. Okay, and then it just kind of indicates where the nose is going to go. So when you put something like this together, you only want to put glue around that section there especially if you're not going to be having something stuck on the back. So I'm just going to put glue just on that little section and then making sure that I've got my lovely stitching on the front. I'm going to stick my hat right over there. And again with liquid glue you can wiggle it into place if you need to. So that fits nice and perfectly there. And then the nose, so this one here, I actually um, colored it with some blends, give it a bit of a rosy look. Here I'm just going to get myself 
a mini dimensional and pop it on the nose so it sticks out. So there's dimensional on the nose. And here's my little nose. And again, you got those lines on there to show you where it's going. So that's my little Santa hat. So I want to um, decorate it. So I'm going to put a one of our Jingle Bell trinkets and some of the Parakeet Party um, ribbon. And the nice thing with this, having that hole there, is I can just pop it through the hole. Now I'm going to use the trinket to allow me to um, keep the tie in place. So I'm just going to guesstimate. Let me put my trinket in. Now trying to get things through the little hole sometimes it's difficult. I sew, so I do have a needle threader. But if you don't sew, I have a tip. Most people have twist ties at home for all sorts of reasons. So if you have your twist tie at home, fold it in half. So we've got our loopy end there. And put your loopy end through the hole that you want your ribbon to go through. Okay, so there's, there we go. So that's my loopy end through the hole of my trinket. Now you just open up your loop. Yep. So there's my loop. And there's my other two ends. Put your ribbon through the loop, ribbon, twine, what, cord, whatever you want, and then pull, and voila. You now have your trinket through, okay? So that's easier than trying to squish it through and do all sorts of other things. If you do um, needle craft like I do, you probably have a needle threader. <laughs> so it works as well. Um, so I'm just going to try to tie a bow on camera. First I will do the traditional knot. And then I usually tie my bows, um, if it's just a, a project I'm doing, I leave it on to the um, reel so that way I don't waste as much ribbon tying my bow because you just never know how much you need. And as you can see, I've got a lot pulling off there just to get the bow done, but it'll shrink down once I get my little leg end bits of the bow sorted. And I'm one of those bow perfectionists that I keep pulling different lengths and sizes and trying to get them all exactly the right size. Okay, well that's good enough. And you got to watch out because this frays as well. So. There's my little bow there. So I'm gonna cut off the ends. Now the back of it. So one thing you want to do is to make it fit nicely, you want to um, curve your beard. So use your bone folder to kind of give a bit of a curve to your beard. And don't worry about that. I mean, especially if you're using the white velvet because it's quite thick. It's much thicker than normal cardstock. So just kind of pull. I'm using my thumb to um, give it the bending where I want it to be, which is right about end of the hat. Okay. So that gives us that little curve there. And now the hat for the back. I'm just going to snip up, snip off the extra. So remember we die cut that. This is going to be glued to the back. Now I'm just going to eyeball about how far down. So I want it to be kind of where the end of the um, original hat was. So I just kind of eyeball that. So that gives me about the right size. 
up this time so I just added a bit of red and that was kind of an afterthought because originally I had made this one the same as the um, bow where um, you slid it over the top of the tab but it was kind of difficult to do that with the beard in the way so I came up with this new idea of sticking it down the middle and then I realized that's kind of like a neck so I'm going to create a neck so just a scrap piece of petal pink cardstock and it doesn't matter about the top um, the bottom's going to go through so you want the bottom to be sticking down a bit you can always cut some off if you find it sticking down too far so I want to glue that just between um, the two sections of a hat so I'm just going to put glue on this hat here which also will help to keep my bow in place so I'll put glue around there, Stick, sandwich that in there, and then I'll just put a little glue on this side. If I need to cut it skinnier or something, I can do it later. And then put my other section of hat over the top. Again, liquid glue is your friend because you can wiggle things into place. So I'm just kind of pushing the glue to hold it into place. Let's just turn it over a bit to make sure. Oh, I did put that hat too high. There we go. You want to make sure your edges are lining up, so moved it over to do that. Now, if you want, you could have cut the hole there and tied the ribbon right through both of them. It doesn't really matter if you did it the way I did or not. And again, block is your friend. You can do, use your block to help push things down and give it more even pressure. Okay. So now, Get our beard back to where he is. So now we basically have a neck for our little Santa gnome. Let's close our box. Before we close our box, let's see what we can put in our box. So I went and got some lollies. So we've got this um, Kinder Mini. Let's see, will that fit in our box? Aha! It fits in our box. Um, Let's see what else we've got. These are from the favorites. In New Zealand we have chocolate boxes called favorites. So these are some of the little things that come out of those. Yep, that looks like it might sort of fit in our box. Yep, that little one fits. Um, the Milky Way, I'm not sure. No, nope, that's too big. Chocolate kisses. So here's two chocolate kisses, a peppermint, oh, and I think that's an almond. So you can fit two. You can try to do a third, but um, it's probably too much. And the other thing with this guy, because the neck's going to go down, you don't want anything too far up. The ones that don't have anything going inside the box, they'd be fine for those other um, treats. So we'll fold down our sides. And when you fold it down, I tug up. I tug this tab up a bit that gives it a bit more security. And then now we want to open the tabs side to side, put our little neck in the center, and push it down. Okay. So there we go. So now when I pushed it down, see the tab you can see is in the outside, but that's fine because it's the same color as the hat, so it's not that noticeable. But I pushed it down, and now, see our little gnome, little Santa box. So there you go. That's the Poppy Parade, and that's the real red. I think you can see the color difference here. We've got our um, soft suede and our crumb cake. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more projects. But before you go, I promised I'd show you some other things. So other things I've done from the catalog, um, they had the bats. So I made a couple bats with some glimmer paper. 
These scenes um, are from a previous um, Halloween stamp set, but it's the same size as what was done in the belt there. Now, this shows quite um, well the uh, technique. Let's just try to get them all on camera. The technique of having the opening in the bottom because see the top there is orange and so I put two pieces I glued the wings together and I left the center open there so you can open that center and slip it over the section nice thing with the wings is they fit nice and tight on either side so it holds it down quite nicely so if you want to do the bat you can do it in cardstock but if you want to have eyes glue the eyes to this section here and slip it over like that then you can pull it open but if you glue the eyes to this you won't be able to pull the opening so some um, uh, so the sample in the catalog I believe has it where the eyes are glued there and the bat is stuck say like this but with the eyes on that part you can't open your box so if you do the two wings together two sets of wings together and then open the center so see that yes uh, see I didn't glue the center at all I only glued the wings and that just slides right over the top okay so there's a couple Halloween bats let's we've got our present some bats some reindeer for our Santas um, of course snowman even though it doesn't snow here at Christmas because right now it's winter so it's not Christmas um, so this is two boxes together uh, I I'm going to do it again and the next time I do it I'm going to use the antlers for the arms and cut off a few little bits because these um, branches are a bit thin and then a ribbon from one of the other sets um, again I just drew the face on there so this is two boxes one of them I put upside down so you can actually open the bottom of it so if you had any treats in there, you could have them coming from the bottom. So this time I tucked the tabs. And then the other one box, I made a hat. So I just used a stitch circle and then a rectangle that I made around this there and, and decorated it. So the hat is attached to one of the flaps. And so the tabs are coming out the head and you can open it. So this one, you could have treats on either side. After I did it, I thought I could have probably cut the bottom in here and made it so you could put treats all the way through so it could be quite tall, which would be uh, another version of this I think I might do. So then you just simply put your tabs in there. Oh, I'm losing the tab. Trouble, you got to make sure you got the tabs together when you slip over the top. Which is why when I put it together, I always pull the tabs up. And then this one, the tab can slip right there. So it's hiding in the top. Okay, so that's a snowman. All right. Hope, hopefully you like those so far, but I'm not done yet. Stay tuned. Um, when I first started playing with it and the numbers, I cut all the numbers out on gold foil, put adhesive backing on it to make it easy to use, and thought, I will do an advent project with it because of all the numbers. So I thought of doing a tree, but doing 24, 25 days uh, turned out to be way too big of a tree. So I decided to do the 12 days of Christmas. And here is my tree. So hopefully you can see that. So I've got 10 in the green. I've embossed on the card stock with the, um, uh, the I think it's the wintry um, embossing folders. There's two of them and one has like um, pine, pine branches. And then I use the wood one at the bottom. And then I did it on the sides as well. Encased them all. Now this one, I've done them so um, they're going the skinny way out and the reason for that let me move everybody sorry guys I need to get out of my way there we go the reason for that is because i can take them out and see how the tab's going that way so it slides in 
and it will um, support the other ones. Originally, I was going to do this just um, freestanding, but it didn't work, so I had to make this um, cover on the edges. So if you have it up and say today is the fifth, you can pull out the fifth, which is in the middle. See, I pulled it up, still standing. And you can open your little treat, which happens to have the chocolate kiss. Or, as I said, you can put a little message in there. So you can see that you um, can emboss onto the cardstock as well. So when I put it back, the gap between the two above is where the little tab slips in. And then either side there's a tab. So there's the tree. Unfortunately you can't hold it up for you very well. It is on my um, blog. So there's a blog right now showing that if you want to have a better look at that. But wait, there is more. <laughs> this one came about, I was trying to create four boxes that fold up together and then unfold. Didn't work, left it for a day, had a look at it, thought, huh, it kind of looks like a caterpillar. Well, it's not. It is a dragon. <laughs> so let me move the tree out of the way. So you can see the dragon. So there's the dragon. Here are the wings from my bat stuck down that way. The wings are also used for arms and legs. I've even used one on the back for the tail. The eye is actually the number zero or nil. The uh, flames are the antlers. I even have the mouth blowing the flames is the zero, so I've got different layers to hold the flames in so I could stick the flames in and glue them down behind. The ears, which I know it probably just has a hole, not proper ears, but those are the ears. And I've got the four boxes. So originally I was trying to make something that all four boxes folded up on top of each other and it just didn't do what I wanted it to do. But again, I made it so you can open it. There, the back opens. So the two boxes there are glued together with this piece. The tail is one of those pieces. Then the next box, the same thing. Those pieces are glued together. The next box, the same thing. Those pieces are glued together. And the wing is glued either side, but I cut down the center so you could still use a slip. And then the head just opens up. So with this treat box, you could actually get four treats in it. And I stamped it with um, a spotty stamp from the pomegranate um, stamp set, which is a host-only uh, gift during celebration. So there's my dragon. So that's where he gets. So hopefully you like that. And I'd love to know which was your favorite. Leave a comment. Tell me which you like best. We've got reindeer. We've got dragons. We've got... Santa gnomes, we've got gift packages, and we have a advent tree to put the packages underneath. My next project, which I probably won't do a video, is I'm going to make a bunch of these little gift boxes and tie it so they can hang on the tree with the advent numbers, but the boxes themselves will be empty, so they're not going to be opened. So. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and hopefully I've answered any of those um, queries on how you actually use the box and get things, um, get it so you can open it up. So please uh, leave comments if you'd like. I hope you enjoyed that. If you'd like any of these products, talk to your demonstrator or contact me. There's my contact details. Thanks so much for watching, and have a gnomey day. Bye!